cartoons that come on in the middle of the night that are just so weird and so obnoxious that you're like, I love this, I need so much more of it. Uh, but then you can't find it ever again. So, yeah, there were a lot of inspirations. It's hard to nail down every single one, but I think if you watch it a few times, you'll find it. Questions? Left? Uh, this question is for Wine Dogs Howl. Um, was that a, is, is, was that based on a, a real date you had, or is that, <laughs> is that like your first pitch to like kind of test women, to, you know, to see how, see how they do? Uh, it is not based on a real date, but interestingly after, uh, you know, long after I had the script and everything, um, one, one of these two things happened, I think, before I shot it, one after I shot it, but both after. I actually had this idea for like 20 years before I finally got to shoot it. So one day I was reading an article or something, and this young woman was talking about how when she and her friends were like in college, when they would go out on first dates, they would do this thing called front-loading, which was to tell their dates all the bad things about them so that if the guy didn't like them, they could just, you know, get it out of the way right quick and, and move on to somebody else. And the other thing, I, I heard this expression recently, I forgot where, but it's called trauma dumping. Um, and I guess, uh, is a thing. Who knew? So there you go. Questions? Uh, another question for the animation of Bruce. Uh, any luck getting that pilot looked at? And are, are there any potential possibilities with the company you worked with before or anything like that? Yeah, so I actually pitched um, it to them first when I came up with the idea. Um, and they really liked it, but they just didn't have any room for it. Uh, since then, we've pitched it to a few companies and um, taken the screener around to different festivals. Um, one of my favorite experiences is uh, we sent it to a festival, not a festival, a company in New York, and they were like, all right, we're going to have um, some anonymous people watch it and give notes, and we'll let you know what we think. And they must have chosen a very old audience um, because they just said no. And when they gave me the notes, someone just wrote lesbian references as why they didn't like it. I have been trying to wrap my mind around that for months. It's just the existence of lesbians. It's not that there's lesbians in the pilot or like that I'm implying something about them. It's just that they exist, which is so weird. So. Uh, we're still shopping around, still looking for avenues, but uh, we're looking right now for funding to turn it into a web series. I have a full season of 10 episodes ready to go, written. Um, money's just the hard part, you know, but maybe I'll approach it again. Maybe they have room now. Fred, right here. This is also for Bruce. Um, I wanted to know, uh, is it uh, very tricky finding an, uh, a sizable animation community here in Vegas? It's a great question. If no one heard, he asked if it was hard to find a community for animation here in Vegas. Was yeah, it like a large group? Or that? You know, it's animation is great because everybody loves it, regardless of what age you are. Um, Vegas is interesting because there's not a lot of stories in Vegas about people living in Vegas. It's always like casino or um, what else? Shout something out if you know it. Um, there's just so much in Vegas that's just casinos and gambling, and when there's something that's actually about the real part of Vegas, people cling to it. Um, in terms of like an animated community, I don't know, I mean, we've shown it in like the Arts District, and that has had a very good effect, um, but I don't know that many animators. We did have one Las Vegas animator work on the project, uh, but he only worked on it for three weeks, because uh, he was amazing, but very combative, and um, wasn't super easy to work with, so. I, I do hope that it becomes a bigger thing, though, because Vegas is such a great place for productions, and um, I don't know, I feel like animation can really work here. It could be like the Canada of the West Coast. <laughs> Any final question? Back there. So I thought both pieces had really great comedic timing, and I wondered if you guys could chat a little bit about um, from when you were first like conceptualizing the piece and writing it, if you found during the performance and in post when you were editing, if the timing of your jokes was changing, especially with um, White Ox, how the cutaways um, to your scene partner, I thought it was all really brilliantly done in both pieces. And I was wondering if you could chat a bit about how the evolution of the comedy took place through your process. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's a really good question. So the interesting thing in animation is 
there's not a ton of improv because you're really front loading a lot of a production. Whereas with doing something in live action, there's a lot of improv on set and there's opportunities for actors to really jump in and do a lot of work. In animation, we plan everything basically second by second. Um, this was interesting though because I had never worked in animation. I kind of just threw everything at the wall and I was like, I'm just going to try it my way. So we did a few table reads and worked out the jokes and saw like what worked and what didn't. Um, a lot of stuff evolved. The only two jokes I'd say that had a lot of work was um, Violet, the purple alien. She has that line after uh, Rianne is like yelling a bunch and talking about like, I don't even remember what she's saying. She's rambling at the table. And then she says, um, if you don't shut up, I'm going to take your nose and shut it down your throat. We had like 20 different versions of that. Because just doing improv, like the actor wanted to try so many different versions. And I couldn't decide on them. There were like so many. It was just variations like, I'm going to take your finger and shove it here. And I'm like, I, they're all so good. And the great thing is doing it in front. We could just send it to the animator and be like, work with it, dude. I don't know what you can do with this, but please make it work. Um, and then the Howard Hughes joke. That was nowhere in the original. It was only after the first screening that I learned people outside of Vegas do not know who Howard Hughes is. Because <laughs> everybody here knows. But um, we played it in South Carolina and everyone was like, that was great. Um, I just don't, what's the significance of him being related to Howard Hughes? And I think like one person was like, oh, he was an aviator. I'm like, there's a lot more than that. But um, somehow that's the joke that always kills. It's just a PNG of Howard Hughes, but people lose their shit when they see it. <laughs> So I hope that answered your question. Um, I spent an obscene amount of time going over the footage over and over, uh, you know, for the reaction shots. Most of them came from different places and not, you know, from, from the line that preceded them. And I spent, in addition to all that time I spent myself going over the footage over and over in my computer, I spent 20 plus hours in a room with an editor quarterbacking it. And, you know, basically using like a razor blade to really, you know, fine tune over and over the cutaways and, um, you know, just basically just taking all the air out of it uh, to, the, to the second so that the ball was always in the air and never would fall down, or the balloon, rather. Yeah. Cool. Let's have a round of applause for these guys.